Hello. Welcome to the Nightly Bedtime Story Podcast. I'm Kevin Hayes, the Story Man. And for tonight's bedtime story, I will read you The Little Brown Man, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. I hope you like it. The Little Brown Man, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. Once upon a time, there lived at the top of a very tall tree a little magic sprite. Now this magic sprite was called the Little Brown Man and the tree was called the Tall Pine Tree. The little brown man was so very small that had you ever seen him skipping and hopping about in his tree, you would have thought him some lively little brown squirrel. The little brown man was always busy as a bee and twice as cheerful. He spent his days sweeping away the withered pine needles so that fresh new green needles might grow. With his cunning hands and powers of magic, he mended broken places in the bark with healing herbs. At night, the little brown man rested from his labors. He curled himself up in the topmost boughs of the tall pine tree, and the tree would rock him gently and sing him songs about the sea. Thus the little brown man, scarce bigger than my hand, and the tall pine tree so high, lived on in peace and happiness until an evil time befell them. It happened on a black winter's night, when the storm wind, in a rage, went crashing through the forest. Lashing the heavy branches of the tallest trees, he tore them loose and flung them to the ground as though they had been but so many twigs. Uprooting tiny trees and saplings by the score, the storm wind tore his way along until he reached the tall pine tree. There he saw the little brown man asleep in its topmost boughs. Ha, little brown man, laughed the storm wind wickedly. At last I've caught you unaware, and I will do you mischief. So saying, he blew a furious blast and flung the little brown man to the ground beneath. Then, in a wailing voice, the storm wind wove a spell of deep enchantment round the little brown man, singing thus. Flaming eye and hand like claw, you'll dwell at your treetop no more. No child at your approach will stay. Your face will scare them all away. But tell some child bid you good day. You'll dwell down on the ground so low and to the tall pine cannot go. And then the storm wind blew away. For a long time the little brown man lay still as one dead, for the fall had hurt him cruelly. The tall pine tree wept bitterly at the little sprite's misfortune, and by and by its tears, falling like rain, wakened the little brown man. But alas, the storm wind's wicked spell had changed him, and the little brown man with flaming eye and claw-like hand, was very fierce and terrible to look upon. "'Oh, tell me, my pine tree,' cried the little brown man in dismay, "'how am I changed thus? My hands are hands no longer, but claws like those of wild beasts. My eye flames redder than the wicked wolf's. I cannot hop or skip. Indeed, I scarce can hobble, so bent and twisted I have grown. Alas, my little brown man!' The tall pine tree replied, While you did sleep, the storm wind tore you from my topmost bough, and wove this wicked spell around you. Until some child will speak to you a kindly word, you must remain thus bound by this evil spell. In spite of his twisted back, the little brown man tried again and again to climb into the tall pine tree, but all his efforts were in vain. Wearied and tired out at last, he made himself a nest among the withered pine needles and began to wait for the magic word to break the storm wind's evil spell. At last the winter passed. The snow began to melt. The brook, freed of its coat of ice, began to sing and chatter as it splashed along. The birds built nests. The sun shone down. The pussy willows, gray and brown, began to bud and bloom. Then boys and girls came out to play beneath the trees and gather buttercups and bluebells. The little brown man's heart rejoiced, for he was sure the evil spell that bound him soon would end. Whenever happy children played beside the tall pine tree, he would hobble toward them, saying, Good day to you, good day to you, my children. But alas, the boys and girls were frightened of his claw-like hands and flaming eye, and so they screamed and ran away. Thus springtime went, and summer followed after. The maple leaves flamed red and gold in autumn and winter came again to wrap the forest in its cloak of snowy white. Still, the magic words to break the storm wind's spell remained unspoken. 
Thus years and years rolled on. In winter now the storm wind tore the branches of the tall pine tree and flung them to the ground. The little brown man with his cunning hands and powers of magic could no longer bind them fast. The tall pine tree, once so green, grew old and rusty-looking, because the little brown man could no longer sweep the withered needles from its boughs. The little brown man, down upon the ground, was in despair. It seemed the wicked spell would never be broken. No children ever lingered near the tall pine tree. Indeed, when once they passed that way, they never came again. They thought the little brown man was a wicked pixie who would do them harm. Then, at last, the little brown man peered from his nest one bright morning and saw a little girl walking slowly toward the tall pine tree. Little Nanny always walked very slowly, because she was quite lame, and leaned upon a crutch. Sometimes she paused to watch a bee or butterfly. Sometimes she leaned against a tree to rest, and all the while the little brown man watched her eagerly. At last she reached the tall pine tree, and then he hobbled forward, saying, "'Good day to you, good day to you, my child.' His flaming eye and claw-like hand so startled little Nanny that she dropped her crutch. But when she saw that the little brown man was also very lame, she was sorry for him, and so she answered bravely, "'Good day to you, good sir. I hope your health is fine.' And so the magic words were spoken. The little brown man could scarcely believe his ears, and began to caper about and prance with glee. Then, presto! In a twinkling banished all his ugly features. His back grew straight, and he was once more kindly eyed. Oh, tall pine tree! Oh, tall pine tree! he cried in joy. Behold, now I am free to climb up to your topmost boughs once more. But in his joy, the little brown man did not forget little Nanny, who stood staring wide eyed at the wonder she had seen. And now, my child, cried he, what can I do to serve you? Oh, please, sir, answered little Nanny timidly. If you would give me my crutch, I would be most grateful. I am so lame that I cannot stoop to pick it up myself. Your crutch, screamed the little brown man in a passion of rage. It is a wicked stick that holds you back when you would run and play, and so I treat it thus. He seized the crutch and flung it in the brook, and there it floated swiftly in the current. Oh, little brown man, what have you done? wept little Nanny. Now I can never wander in the forest any more, but must sit always in my chair. I cannot walk without my crutch, and my mother is too poor to buy me another. She leaned against the tall pine tree and sobbed aloud. Stop, stop, little Nanny, cried the little brown man. I meant you no harm, as you will see. Now tell me this, is it your wish to always walk with a crutch? If so, say but a word, and I will bring it back again. For now my powers of magic are returned. Oh, little brown man, answered little Nanny through her tears. I do not wish to always walk with a crutch. Indeed, I often weep because I wish to run and play like other boys and girls. Then try, and see if your wish will come true, little Nanny, commanded the little brown man. Little Nanny took a step forward, and then another, and another, and found her feet like wings. So, singing and laughing, she danced home through the forest, the happiest child in all the world. When she reached her gate, she cried out, Oh, mother, mother, come quickly and see. I can run and play like other boys and girls. The little brown man has granted my wish to me. My child, cried her mother in amazement. This is the work of a good fairy without doubt. And what did you say to thank the little brown man? Oh, mother, I was so happy I forgot, replied little Nanny, hanging her head. Then let us go in search of him at once, said her mother. So hand in hand they sought the little brown man. But though they called loud and long at the foot of the tall pine tree, they could not find the little brown man. For at the magic of a kindly word, he had flown to the topmost boughs, and there he dwelled forevermore. I hope you liked tonight's bedtime story, The Little Brown Man, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. I'm Kevin Hayes, the Story Man, and I'll be back tomorrow night on the Nightly Bedtime Story podcast to read you another bedtime story. But for tonight, 
Good night.